Okay. So the question is, um, uh, what XR will do for five G? Okay. Um, and before, and was again lucky enough to be able to leverage the previous two speakers who already said uh, everything about what five G uh, actually does. So I don't need to talk about that. But what I'll talk about uh, before I get to the connection of 5G and XR is to tell you a little bit about uh, where 5G actually is in terms of uh, deployment uh, right now. And the um, rate of deployment in 5G is nothing to do, no comparison with how 4G was uh, deployed. Uh, in the first year of LTE, there were just four operators and three devices in the market globally. Okay? Look at where we are today, just months, uh, you know, halfway through the first year of, uh, of launch. We have more than 20 operators that will be uh, far exceeding that number by the end of the year across the, the, the globe and way more than 20 uh, devices uh, announced, many of them in the uh, market already. Of course, a lot of them are using uh, uh, 5G technology developed by Qualcomm and our uh, X50 uh, solution. So and here's some, some of them, uh, and uh, have smartphones at the top. Smartphones are very important for this industry because they provide the scale that every, everything else rides on. So you will never be able to develop a, you know, a, a, health, a healthcare application or an even industrial application with 5G if you don't have the scale that comes with smartphones, because that allows us to bring down the prices to a level that can be integrated everywhere. So this is very, very important. And we don't only get uh, smartphones, but we, uh, we have today already uh, customer premise equipment for fixed wireless access. We have uh, mobile hotspots. And very soon you will see on the right there modules. And these are the 5G modules that will enable a lot of the new verticals that will go in equipment that are not uh, smartphones. Uh, and these are very cool devices. So, you know, mo when people buy 5G, they will not buy 5G. They will buy the best smartphone in the market. And that smartphone will have, the best smartphone in the market will have 5G in it. So 5G adoption will be natural as, par as part of your uh, smartphone upgrade cycle. All right, so how, how all this helps um, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality? Wh wh what's the connection? Um, mixed reality, and in particular augmented reality, has a, uh, what I call a here-to-there problem. Because the vision of augmented reality is very clear. I think uh, our vision is, is, is this, and I think this is shared by the community that is working on these things. Which is basically, what we all want is sunglasses style form factor uh, with uh, incredible optics, uh, sensors, cameras that uh, augment our environment as needed for our professional or private use case. And uh, to, but to do that, you also need to have top of the line compute capability, fantastic connectivity, so that you can you are not confined in your home or business, and you need, of course, very long battery life. And you cannot have all of these things at the same time with today's technology. Actually, there are, we are a fair amount of years away from being able to implement anything like this um, at, at the right form factor and, uh, and scale. So how do we get there? Okay. So um, let's look at that road from, from here to there. So here's where we are today, what we have achieved today. So starting from virtual reality, and I'll, I'll talk about augmented reality also. So in virtual reality, you have two types. Uh, the industry started with two types of uh, VR. Headsets that connect to a very powerful PC, <coughs> usually something that costs like three, 4,000 pounds uh, on the PC side, and then uh, some sig significant amount on, on, on the headset. And that gives you the best uh, quality of VR today. That's uh, things like the Oculus Rift and uh, 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 the HTC Vive. So this is very good. And if you have used such a thing, it's, it's very convincing. It's very compelling. But it's very expensive and is tethered to a PC. Or you have like the slot, it, the slot in um, uh, case where you have some, something like the Google uh, 
cardboard that allows you to slot in your smartphone and experience uh, VR at some basic level. But to be honest, that experience is pretty poor. Uh, it's, it's really, people have been turned off from VR from that experience. It's not, it's not something that I like. No, so, so that was until pretty much this year. But this year we saw this uh, standalone uh, equipment, first generation of standalone, or rather it's not first generation, it's second actually. But um, things like the Oculus Quest that was announced very recently, which is the first device that is you know, fully, uh, you know, it's one piece uh, and you can, um, six degrees of freedom, you can move. Um, no wires, it's a, it's a great device, but it's really, you know, room scale uh, use. So you, you use three by three, uh, as, as I was said earlier. Um, and, and so then that's still limited in some fashion, very, very compelling, but, but limited. So we, we see now a new generation of devices that will come to the market from the second part of this year, and even more next year, where you have, um, split processing between the device in your head and some, uh, uh, some uh, other device. So PCs will continue to play a role there and laptops. But importantly, the device that we will utilize most is your smartphone. Okay, so we will connect uh, glasses to a smartphone or headsets. And then uh, we will get rid of the wire because you can use wireless in a, in a local uh, fashion like 60 gigahertz 11 AD. Um, and of course, in both of these cases, the device on the back is if it's a PC has a, a good connection for, to home, if it's a smartphone, it has a 5G connection. Um, and a, eventually we'll go further and actually get some of the processing happening on the other side of the network in, in, uh, uh, in, in Mac uh, edge compute over the 5G connection itself. Okay, and very similar things will happen on the augmented reality side. And that's even more important augmented reality because that's what you can wear, that's what you need to use when you are out, outdoors and you want to be able to interact with the environment. Okay, so um, this is uh, what will get us to the, uh, to, to, to the there, okay, that we all want to get to. So, and all this is not uh, just uh, talk, it's uh, actually happening today. Okay, so this is, uh, we announced recently, uh, the, the um, uh, XR uh, viewers, uh, which are basically either uh, simple viewers, we call them, or smart viewers, depending on the type of processing uh, you do, and I, I'll explain. So this, all of these devices connect to your smartphone with a cable, USB-C today. And then what you do is that um, we, you know, this architecture allows the device OEM that builds this, the glasses to focus on form factor, low weight, optics, and sensors. And they can outsource all the processing, battery, and connectivity to the smartphone that you already carry with you. Okay? And that's incredibly powerful because not only the form factor can get reasonable, but uh, even uh, equally important, I should say, uh, the price of the package is vastly reduced because now you, you can utilize your several hundred uh, pounds or dollars smartphone device, and you only need the optics. You don't need to replicate the processing, the battery, and the connectivity. And uh, the, the result is, uh, is, is very good performance uh, at a reasonable price with um, a good, good power uh, consumption and uh, improved thermals. That's the other big thing with these big things that you wear, they get really hot because there are a lot of electronics in them. So you outsource a lot of that to your, to your phone. Um, so this is a program that we started last year. There are OEMs that have been working on this for many months, and some of them have uh, announced the products already. So I have an uh, example here with uh, Unreal. Unreal has produced uh, very cool glasses, and they can do things like this if the video plays.
right? So this kind of uh, 3D hologram, uh, 60 degrees of freedom, you can move around, um, and, and now it, you can experience this with something like this. I'm not sure about the color, but otherwise it's great. Um, uh, the, I mean, if you, if you are familiar with other things, other devices that are fully integrated and do this kind of thing today, uh, you will know that this is an incredible achievement. And the price of it, because it utilizes your smartphone, is um, uh, com completely different. So if you get a, a you know, HoloLens or, or Magic Leap, which are the leaders in, in fully integrated, fantastic devices, uh, they are many thousands of dollars. This is like $500. Okay? It becomes an accessory that you can now um, afford in addition to your, uh, or uh, like you of us can, can afford, of course, uh, in addition to your smartphone. Um, and they, there are many of these uh, being uh, implemented by different manufacturers. They will be interoperating with different devices because we provide from Qualcomm interoperability between uh, device OEMs, smartphone device OEMs and uh, glass uh, OEMs. We have a, ho a whole program uh, to, to ensure interoperability. And uh, they will start becoming available uh, uh, the, in real uh, at the end of the year. Uh, and uh, many others you will you will hear about soon. So, um, so again, 5G is here. Um, uh, it is coming in a network near you uh, faster than I ever thought it would. It's uh, it's uh, really ple pleasing to see, with many smartphone devices and many other types of devices, and I think it will make a significant difference on 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 XR. Do you want the uh, the prediction now, or when we talk about later? Yeah, make a bold prediction. Okay, the, then the prediction is that in um, within uh, by you know 2025, uh, I think XR mixed reality will have been fully embraced in enterprise uh, world. Um, it will have been fully embraced in, in gaming community, uh, in co on consumer side. And a significant number of us will be carrying these kinds of things in our um, daily lives. So that's my prediction. Thank you.